Hey everybody, it's Monday again. Monday means Murfreesboro, and the Doctors Inn Live with TOA is here in Murfreesboro once again. Uh, it's cold and nasty out, so it's winter, so it's fun. Um, I'm Gray Stallman, I'm your host. Uh, uh, happy that you're here. Hopefully these episodes have been entertaining at least, informational hopefully, um, to try to help you understand a little bit about what we do for a living. You can see I have a, a new guest. Dr. Brown is um, a hand and upper extremity specialist here in Murfreesboro. I'm going to let her introduce herself, but uh, I'm really thrilled to have her here because hand problems are so common and we haven't had anybody who can address those as of yet. So um, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, as always, um, just remember that while we are orthopedic surgeons, we are not your orthopedic surgeons, so please treat this information uh, for informational purposes only, uh, maybe a little uh, entertainment purposes only. This is not medical advice. If you have concerns about a problem that we talk about, maybe it applies to you, uh, please call us or go online, toa.com, and you can find somebody here with TOA um, who can help you with your problem. Get the expert's opinion, okay? So without further ado, uh, Sean Brown, Gray Stallman. This is Dr. Brown, everybody, and uh, I'm thrilled to have you here. Thank you for being here. Yes. And uh, thanks for agreeing to go get on the spot uh, with uh, uh, Facebook people. And um, uh, before we go any further, why don't you do me a little favor and tell everybody who you are and kind of your background and what you're all about. Fantastic. Well, thank you for inviting me today, Gray. It's great to be here with you as well as the Facebook Live guests. Um, I have been practicing here with TOA for the last 13 years. Um, my background is hand and upper extremity training. I trained at the University of Pittsburgh, um, and that's where I did my orthopedic residency and my fellowship. And so I mainly see patients here in Murfreesboro, but I do outpatient and inpatient surgical procedures here at um, Ascension, St. Thomas Rutherford, as well as at Stonecrest Medical Center and our Middle Tennessee Ambulatory Surgery Center. I also help out with a few of the local high schools as well as with some of the MTSU athletes as well. Awesome, we had uh, Mike Jordan on last time we were here and he was telling us all about what it is like to be a team physician. So thank you for your time and efforts because it's it's a lot of work, somewhat satisfying, yes. but still a lot of work. And yes. so it's a, we, I think the community really appreciates that. So when we got to thinking about what we wanted to talk about, one of the things that came up uh, was common types of hand problems, injuries in particular. And that's kind of the topic you suggested as a good place to start. Um, so tell me a little bit about hand injuries. Um, we, you can go into anything you want, um, uh, but what's, wh why are they so important? Uh, and I think ab ab above all of our structures, the hand is probably, in my opinion, one of the most complex uh, uh, and challenging with regard to management. So give me an idea of kind of some of the hand injuries that people may face, and we can kind of go into some of the details. Well, I think hand injuries are very common because we all, for lack of a better way to say it, we all use our hands and we use our hands for everyday activities. We use our hands for sporting activities as well as whatever our occupationals may, occupations may be. So I see quite a few um, patients who have injured themselves in sporting activities. I also see a lot of patients when they do home improvement um, <laughs> activities that they will have injuries in since people have been home more with COVID, I've definitely seen an uptick in injuries of people doing home improvement projects and they've had injuries um, from those type of activities. Um, with the hand, I think one important thing to think about in such a small area or space, there are a lot of very important structures. You have your tendons, you have your ligaments, and there are nerves and vessels that are there. The key with the hand is that those important structures are very superficial. So one of the common injuries that I see are hand or finger lacerations. And so the key point that I would like to point out to all of the folks watching today is that immediate evaluation is necessary because although you may think that it's a small cut or a laceration, it has the potential to damage a tendon or a nerve or a ligament. 
So that's very important to know. Those structures are very superficial, meaning they're very close to the skin. So although it may appear to be a small cut or a puncture, it has the potential to damage a very vital structure. And it, from my training way back when, and uh, those types of structures are actually not only important in function, but you've got to get at them pretty quickly in order to get the best outcome. Is that right? Right. So that's very correct. I'm glad you brought that up. That was going to be my next point, is that with a tendon laceration or injury, we need to assess those, and if it requires surgery, get to those within two weeks. So if someone delays care, um, that will delay the potential for their recovery because we need to see those patients with fractures, tendon lacerations, or tendon ruptures within two weeks of the injury. So that's why I always say it's better to come in to see us here at TOA or any urgent care clinic. And it's really nice now that we have an urgent care which is open after five here in Murfreesboro as well as on the weekend. So if any of our viewers today have an acute injury to the hand or upper extremity, we have physician assistants who are here after 5 p.m. and on the weekends and they're available to assess those types of injury. And they can get them plugged in to see myself who is one of the hand surgeons or Dr. Kyle Joyner who is another hand surgeon very quickly. So give me an idea. I, I I know the answer is going to be, well, it depends, but um, when should somebody consider going to the emergency room versus the walk-in clinic for a laceration or cut to your hand? Right. So I would suggest the emergency room visit would be necessary if you see an obvious deformity of the hand or the finger, meaning it looks out of place or crooked, and it's something that may require more than an urgent care clinic can offer, such as sedation. Because if something is out of place, you may require some type of sedation to put you to sleep or sedate you to be able to put it back in place. So that would be one reason to go to the emergency room. A second would be a, a kind of rule of thumb is if you hold pressure for 10 minutes and the bleeding stops, then it's probably going to be okay. If you hold pressure for 10 minutes and the bleeding is still very copious and it's still a lot of bleeding, then definitely that would be a visit that you would want to go to the emergency room for. And then the last thing about laceration is you mentioned the tendons and the ligaments, the nerves and the vessels. Um, how, uh, and you mentioned two weeks, how quickly does, for example, if you damage one of the nerves, how quickly does it become permanently damaged or unable to be repaired? Mm -hmm. How long does it take? I would say probably a minimum of two weeks, but I've had some at three weeks that I've gone in to repair and I've had good results with. Okay. So I would think after the three week period, think after 21 days, definitely 28 days, then I would probably say there are some permanent changes that have occurred that we may not be able to reverse even if we go in surgically and do the repair. Gotcha, okay. So laceration is probably the most common thing we see in general in the hand, right? I would say lacerations and fractures. Fractures, okay. Yes. So give me a little bit about the fractures. Right. Fractures mean broken bones. Right. Okay. So with fractures, I would say my words of wisdom would be to our viewers today, these are just some common myths that I have heard. Um, after someone injures a finger, they will say, well, I can still bend it so it can't be broken. So that is 100% not true. So you can still move an extremity, a digit, and it can still be fractured or broken. Other people will say that once the swelling goes down, then I'll be able to bend it or use it. And again, that again is a false um, piece of information that's been passed around. So if you can't move the finger or bend it, you probably injured a tendon or it probably is fractured. So my words of wisdom are, if you've had some type of traumatic injury where you have jammed it, or some people use the term, I've stoned it, any of those terms, 100%, it's worth a visit to either one of our urgent care clinics, seeing myself here in the office as a provider, or if it's that severe, you know, going to the emergency room to have the radiographs performed. And I'll give you two quick examples. I saw a patient last month who dislocated her finger in September and she didn't come to the office until January and then <clears throat> excuse me and then I saw another patient today actually who injured her finger early January and she didn't come in until today so both of those are delayed presentations 
And so the key is for either of those patients, if I had seen them right after the injury happened, it's an easier just close reduction, meaning putting the finger or joint back in place. Now that both of those are past four weeks, six weeks, several months out, I only have the option of going in surgically and doing the repair. So I can imagine that the, the things have really changed since I trained 25 years ago. Um, Not a lot. <laughs> but the techni technologies have changed some. We've got better tools in our toolbox mm -hmm. uh, with smaller bones. Um, we have better systems of, of plates and screws, if you will, and whatnot. Um, which allows us to move the parts earlier, which then increases the ability to regain function. And that's the whole point, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So um, if somebody, um, so we've got fractures, we've got lacerations. Give me the top five big injury things in the hand or wrist that are, that are kind of you see that you want to make sure that people are aware of. Right. So I would say number one are lacerations, meaning they can occur on the back of the hand, um, extensor tendon on the palm side is the flexor. So number one would be lacerations to the hand or the finger. Number two would be fractures, and those can go anywhere from fractures of the individual finger bones, or they could be what are some people are commonly familiar with boxers fractures. So those fractures are of the fifth metacarpal. So that would be number two. Number three would be dislocations, meaning the finger is out of joint or out of place. So that would be number three. Number four, I would put um, thumb injuries. So a common one that I see as a hand surgeon is an ulnar collateral ligament injury to the thumb, or some people call it skier's thumb or gamekeeper's thumb. The key here again, the ligament on the inside of the thumb will tear. So these patients may fall and catch their thumb on some type of object, but it was called skier's thumb because they were common with, with different poles that people use for skiing that they had those injuries. But this one is important as number four because it's a ligament, so it needs to be repaired sooner than later. And then number five, I would probably put wrist injuries, so distal radius fractures. The reason distal radius fractures are important to see sooner than later, I'll see a population of younger patients, 18 to probably 25 or 30, that fall onto an outstretched wrist and they may get initial radiographs that say, oh, there's no fracture, you're fine. But what we're looking for is the hand surgeon, if they continue to have pain two weeks later or three weeks later, I should see them back because they ha could have what's called a scapoid fracture. And the scapoid fracture is something that is not easily detected on the initial radiographs and it may require advanced imaging, such as a CT scan or an MRI. So that would be my top five. Yeah, excellent, excellent. We're not talking about the other types of injuries that are really devastating, which are you know the post-traumatic infections, and then the other one that I was always interested in as a resident are the um, not envenomations, the the um, injection injection yes. injuries. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Where people get high pressure mm -hmm. paint or right. water squirted into their skin, right. and those things are surgical emergency right. types of problems. Mm -hmm. And so those would be for my patients who I see a lot of workers compensation injuries like that. So if you work in construction and these are called paint gun injuries or high pressure injection injuries, if anything injects into the finger or the joint or the joint, that's something that immediately you come straight to the emergency room for do not pass go, go straight to the emergency room. So a question, my wife works in residential construction, and so she works with a lot of people who are, you know, framing houses and whatnot, and inevitably somebody will take a nail gun and stick it through their hand or yes. in their thigh. Question that they always ask me, because I'm my wife's husband, yes. is should I pull the nail out or not? Mm -hmm. What do you think? So I usually recommend that they come to a, an emergency room for an urgent care because we don't know where that nail has gone. So I always recommend radiographs to the residents or the ER hospital staff before they just go to pull it out because you want to know where, what is the trajectory of that foreign body, where did the nail go? Is it in bone? Is it not in bone? Did it fracture the bone? And those are the things that you just don't know by just quote unquote pulling it out on site. 
So I definitely value um, an evaluation in an emergency room for that so that they can obtain radiographs to know where the nail has gone. And secondly, once you pull the nail out, if there was a vessel that starts to bleed, if you're in the emergency room, they have uh, better equipment um, to handle um, controlling that bleeding versus on site at a construction site, you don't have the equipment necessary to control that bleeding. So don't pull the nail out and then wipe it on your pants and keep working, okay? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. The big thing, too, is infection. That, that nail is right. nasty, and who knows where right. it's been. Well, we yeah. also make sure when the patients come in or the ER staff does that their tetanus shot is up to date, and then if, if they require a dose of IV antibiotics, that's something that we can provide in the emergency room or in an urgent care clinic. And then sometimes some doctors recommend a short course of some oral antibiotics, depending on the scenario of what the farm body actually was. So Sean, tell me a little bit about um, injury recovery. Now I know it's a broad topic, mm -hmm. but how, uh, when, you, when you take care of somebody with a hand injury, what are the injuries that really take a long time that are really important to care for critically versus, oh, you can just let that one go? Right. Uh, that's a loaded question, obviously, but. Right, and I'll, I'll break it down. We've talked a lot um, this afternoon about lacerations, so I will definitely focus there. Lacerations are hard, I shouldn't say, they are injuries that take a long time to heal. So I don't want a patient to feel like after we repair an extensor tendon or a flexor tendon that, oh, in two weeks I'm gonna be back to normal, because that's definitely not the scenario. It takes at least six to eight weeks for the tendon to heal or mend back together. Then you have a period of time where you need to work on getting your range of motion back and your strength back. So I tell most patients with tendon, or, um, tendon repairs after the surgery, your recovery time is a minimum of three months and that you will continue to see improvement up to one year out from the injury. Yeah, that was my concern, yes. particularly the flexor tendon, which Absolutely. are the tendons that make your fingers right. bend, um, because those are highly used uh, structures that have very high tolerances, mm -hmm. very yeah, very critical tolerances. Yes. So they they move in little tubes and and around corners, um, and it, it's important for them to be taken care of. People need to really understand, I think, that. You need to listen to the surgeon. You need to listen to the therapist right. uh, because if you tear it apart before it's healed, it's far worse to fix and the outcomes are far worse, right? right. So my line is, it was fun for me to fix it the first time. It's <laughs> not so much fun for me to fix it the second time. Right. And it will never be fun for you to <laughs> no, go it's through It's never fun for the patient. That's right. That's but right. it's always fun for me the first that's time, right. but not the second time. But you did mention therapists, so I also want to let our guests know today that Therapy is a critical part of a lot of things that I see and do as a hand surgeon. And again, not minimizing what you and I do as surgeons, but a lot of the things that we put back together, bones or tendons, we it's easy for us to put them back together. But really the work comes in when they're in therapy. And so the therapy protocol for most patients with a tendon repair or a very complex fracture of the upper extremity, you're looking at therapy two times a week for six weeks. So I always try to get patients to buy in on the front end knowing this is something that I'm going to have to invest in and I'm going to have to do the therapy part of it. So our therapists that we work with here, and we have a great group of therapists in our occupational and physical therapy departments who are excellent, but they are those patients with those types of injuries who require surgery, even some who are treated non-surgical will require intensive therapy. Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning that because I've always thought of, in my work in spine, I use some therapy, mm -hmm. but it's really more rehab rather than uh, rebuilding function as mm -hmm. much. And um, it's always been my experience that hand, small joints, so hand, elbow, shoulder, require lots of therapy for a lot longer than does knee or hip, uh, bigger joints, and then does spine. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it really is important to, um, to, again, listen to the therapist and trust their professionalism alongside the surgeon's professionalism to give you the best outcome. Uh, because we can't, make it, we can't make it better than it was. Yes. We hope to get as close as we can to the way it was just before you stuck that knife through your hand or the nail gun through your hand. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling against mother nature and healing right. and non-ideal situations. Right. So. And that's an important um, 
point to bring up for our guest as well to let them know that after you have one of these injuries, it's a very severe injury. So our goal is to get patients back to functioning and doing the activities of daily living that they like to do as well as their sport. But do I ever promise a patient that your range of motion will be perfect? No, I don't do that. Because as you pointed out earlier, those are very small structures that are going through very small tubes and compartments and you, patients will tend to develop scar tissue. So again, will you have functionality of your hand? Absolutely, that's what our goal is, but will the range of motion be perfect like it was before? Maybe not. And that's something that we all have to know going into it as a team and working together. Yeah, that's a hard thing for mm -hmm. people to really grasp onto is, mm -hmm. I wanna be back to normal, yes. uh, and we do what we can to get as close to normal as possible, but there are a lot of variables out there that are out of our control. Yes. Um, so, in the last couple of minutes, I know you got some things to do, mm -hmm. what kind of message do you wanna to give to the folks out there about hands uh, and hand injuries? I think my closing message would be the importance of seeking medical attention quickly if you sustain an injury to the hand. I don't think it's something you should think I'm going to wait and see if it gets better or I'm going to um, wait till the swelling goes down. That really is my take home point and something that I always try to teach residents or medical students that we're working with is the importance of getting those patients in to see a specialist sooner than later because I know that whether I see a patient five days out from an injury versus five weeks out from an injury can significantly change their outcome. Um, so I would urge all patients today who have watched us this afternoon to say, hey, if I have an injury to my finger or my hand, I think I may have broken something or I feel something feels numb and tingly or just doesn't feel normal, I'm gonna go get this checked out. And I, I'd rather you come in sooner and we say, oh, well, everything's great, nothing's broken, nothing, no tendons are injury, injured and they just go on their way versus not having that time. Yeah, I think that's a, a great point. Um, uh, people tend to want to wish away yes. the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, the time that it takes to wish something away and then it doesn't go away, now you can be in a pickle with regard to getting the best outcome. Um, I'm also a big believer, we have, uh, you mentioned Dr. Joyner, um, we have a, a slew of orthopedic surgeons in um, TOA. We have a fair number of specialty trained orthopedic surgeons <coughs> in hand and upper extremity. Yes. And so it would be my suggestion to people that if you've injured your hand, and basically we're talking about basically wrist on down, um, if you've injured your hand, it's the best thing to really go to the hand and upper extremity specialist. Mm -hmm. Most orthopedic surgeons like myself have trained in hand, but we don't do it every day. Mm -hmm. And um, timing is, is important. So we're fortunate with TOA. Uh, go to toa.com uh, <coughs> online. We have hand surgeons in most, if not all of our oh, offices. Okay. Um, and therapists, uh, we have hand therapists in every office. We have hand therapy, I believe. Yes. Um, and those venues of, of expertise, I think are really, really, really critically important. Um, the hand, you only have two of them, and, um, and they're super special. They're super, super, super refined uh, machines. Uh, and we, to get the best outcome, frankly, I think the hand surgeons would agree. Um, and most everyone in our practice would agree that the hand specialist is really the way to go. So um, I would definitely say we can get you in if you've had an injury, the hand specialist want to get you in. Um, don't be afraid to um, give us a call, get online and, um, and get that looked at. And if, you, if, we, if we tell you or if Sean tells you, don't worry about it, it's nothing, you just bruised it, thank your lucky stars and move on, right? <laughs> um, and stay away from the nail gun. Yes. Um, anyway, John, thank you very much for oh, being here. Thank you for having um, me today. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's uh, you like educating people and you're good at it and I appreciate it. So if you want to come back anytime and talk about any other topics, please just grab me and uh, let's do it. Um, other than that, um, we're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do next. I think I may come back next week and do a kind of a specialty topic that is a little bit personal on my side 
uh, about lower back pain. Uh, and then in two weeks, is it two weeks, Katie? Mm -hmm. Two weeks, we're gonna be, again, speaking to uh, one of our physical therapists. So we haven't yet to um, figure out a topic for that one, mm -hmm. but we will get back to you. And again, um, first quarter of this year, we're gonna be in Murfreesboro as much as possible. So if you have questions, you have comments, comment below. Um, we'll answer the questions. We'll refer you to the right people if we need to. If you have needs or uh, problems, whatever that is, musculoskeletal wise, that's bone, muscle, joint, nerves, um, go to toa.com. You can learn about our practice. You can learn about our physicians. You can learn about our locations, what services we have to offer. We, you can even initiate uh, making an appointment online and getting some information to us. So please go to toa.com and we look forward to treating you. Anyway, until then, go out there, live your best life. Sean, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good thank to you see for you having again. me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a great day, guys. Take care, y'all.